when I was studying, I used to fake it a lot. I used to hire these Amani suits, you know, when I go to a meeting. Mm. Welcome back to the Black Excellence Series. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, what are you waiting for? Make sure that you click the button below, subscribe, and join the revolution. Don't be a bystander, be a part of it. Welcome to our channel, sir. Thank you so much for having me. Can you tell us a bit about yourself? So, who are you? What do you do? Where did you grow up? Crazy, young, passionate, inspired, motivated young individual. Um, originally from Italy, in the Bobo. Um, I was born in the East Rand, um, grew up in the East Rand, uh, come from a very poor family, you know. My mom was a housewife, and my dad was the only one working in a family of four. Mm -hmm. So it was pretty much tough, you know, growing up in one room, we eat there, sleep there, mm -hmm. the whole right. thing, you know. Um, but I think the spirit came from my mom. She was an entrepreneur, you know, so she started by selling cigarettes and selling apples. And before you knew it, she had like a full blown touch shop, you know. Mm -hmm. And then the touch shop became a spaza, and then the spaza became like a mini shop, and then from a mini shop, it became a proper shop, you know. Right. And that's how she was able to basically fund our education, you know. And we had a lot of highs and lows. My dad lost his job, so it was like very hard. So my mom ended up taking care of the household you know, mm. from the touch shop. You shared a story about how you personally had to work selling fruits and vegetables to be able to fund your education and stuff. Can you tell us a bit more about that time in your life? Yeah, like I said, um, my mom was the only one working. So obviously when it gets to high school phase, it becomes tough with four kids, you know? Right. And uh, my dad was helping out in the tuck shop and stuff. But then there came a time where we're not making enough money to survive, you know? So school in the, in the school I went to, you had to make sure your term was paid up for you to get your report. Mm. So it's sort of like I had to find a way to support, you know, the household, you know? Um, so that's when I started, you know, the same thing that my mom did, you know, the veggies and stuff. So I would like set up a table in town after school and be chilling there, bring my friends. And, like, we made it cool. It wasn't like a sad, you know. And the funny thing is when you go through those kind of things, you don't feel like you low at that point, you know. Mm. So I had to basically do that. It was just a means for me to be able to get to the next level, to pay for my school fees, to be able to also have money to look for. Like during holidays, I was always working, you know. Yeah. Whether it's at like a mall, at a store, at a supermarket, whatever it is. And luckily I got employed at a, a recording studio. Mm -hmm. You know, that's where I started like getting into the industry because then I'd work with all these artists that come in and engineer. And I was working for free, so I'd sell pages to get money for taxi and whatever. But I was building up my dream, you know, to be right. at the time I wanted to be a musician. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was gonna be the next best thing, you know. So right. So that's what I was working towards and um, through that, you know, I was I was very passionate so I wasn't even worried about the money and stuff. Mm. But I built solid contacts and learned so much for free, you know, instead of going to like a school to learn sound engineering, I was learning it with people who were busy recording albums, you know, so the experience that I got and then from there on I, I moved and started working in the industry from a very young age, I think I was like, what? Um, 15, 14, when I started, you know, in the wow. industry. So I've built a lot of contacts over the years, you know, yeah. In one of your talks, you said the first step to taking the first step mm. is taking the first step. Exactly. And so my question is, what was your first step that you took that got you to where you are today? Um, the first step was taking responsibility for my own life, mm. you know. Not saying my parents are going to take care of it, the government's going to take care of it, so and so is going to take care of it. It was me realizing that you know what, the people around me are trying, but at the end of the day, we all have challenges. You know? mm. My mom had four kids, she couldn't do for me what she can do for the first one. You know, in, right. in, in, in the black families, they always push the first one mm -hmm. so that the first one can come back and help. So, me being the third one, I was like, you know, for me to fast track and get to where I want to go, I need to take challenge. So I think that was the first step because then even when things were tough, it was I never looked for someone to blame. I never looked for 
help outside. He was always like, what can I do? Okay, this doesn't work, let me come back. So that was the first step for me to accept that, you know what, this is something that I need to do. Mm. And then I'm taking responsibility. Because by me taking responsibility, I was able to push myself even when I couldn't. Mm. You know, because I knew that I, all I had was myself. Of course, there are some mistakes that you found, you found have made along the way. So what is the one mistake that maybe, when you think about mistakes, it comes to mind? And how did you learn and recover from it? Bad financial business uh, decisions, you know. I think in business we get excited, you know. You make your first million. You think, I made it, you know. I'm not thinking that, you know, I made this million. It took me this long to make a million. How long is it going to take me to make money? Because you know, in business there's bursts. Mm -hmm. In these three months, I could be turning over millions, and then the next six months is quiet. Right. So when I first got to that phase, that three months, I went crazy. Uh, I went crazy. Uh, just thinking about it. I can see right now, like you're sitting on visual, like you can see yourself. I, but I lived, guys. I lived. Yo, I lived. I am. Thank you, people. You know, so, those are like, like I made that business, you know, hiring people because of friendships. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I work with a lot of beautiful women, spoiling them, and not respecting them. But, like, you know, just because I've always had that thing that when I do well, I want everyone around me to mm -hmm. benefit. Right. Know, which sometimes is a mistake, you know, because then you attract bad energy because now people are there for the wrong reasons. So right. that's what I used to have parties every weekend, you know, all, mm. all paid. I used to, so those are some of the mistakes because when I look at it now and how I think now, I could have invested that money. Sure. You know, I could have, um, and the biggest mistake was we've been renting office space for years. That takes your money. Oh, yeah. That takes and then your I was money. like, you know what? Let me buy a house and turn it into an office. Mm. You know, it's an asset, you own it, it's big, it's enough space. We buy an office, it's quite mm. you know, So for a long time, I was after the hype. I want the office in center. Mm. I, want, I want it must look like this, you know, stainless. I need to drive this fancy car. And then you realize that, you know, at the end of the day, this expensive car where I'm paying 20000 a month, mm. I could take the 20000 and invest in someone else and rather pay 3000 Man. Right, and it's not the car that makes me money. It's my brains. It's this and that. It's my cameras. It's my equipment. Why not invest the money there? Right, you know. So the mistake was yeah, spending and living for other people. I think when you get to a point where not everyone gets to a point, but I think you get to a point where you're comfortable with yourself, mm. comfortable with your achievements, you're comfortable with where you want to go, and then you just live. You know? Right. A lot of successful people they live basic lives. You know, they don't dress all these fancy brands and things. Like they have enough to buy clothes. Brand you ambassador. Know? Yo, like I've got like <laughs> yo, like three bedrooms on the place. Yo, thank you so much, TJ. Um, but you know, you get to a point where I don't care what car I drive. Mm. You know, it doesn't mean anything to me anymore. Obviously, where I stay, I need the comfort. Right. But I'm not after the area. I'm after the the basics like security. All of that, you mm. know. So I think, I think, yeah, you know, making those mistakes helps you get to that point. You right. have to make those mistakes because when you start business, the first thing that you think of is, oh, I'm the money, so I can live like this, mm. you know. Mm. And then when you get there, you've lived. You know, a lot of people, you know, you have to live. And I'm grateful that I went through that phase and I lived because now I'm right, you know. Right. Yeah. Like if you diss my car or my shoe, okay, cool. Oops, I'm sorry, you're a brand ambassador. Let's talk. Let's, let's talk back. Let's, let's talk good. Let's talk assets. Yeah, so, so you know, people who, even those people that are taking that way, they're not on your level because people right. are on your level know, you know. When I was starting, I used to fake it a lot. I used to hire these Amani suits, you know, like on the mm. I used to hire a chauffeur to do services. Sure. You know? yeah, but I was smart. Like, I would maybe drive to the corner and then it's just from there to there. Yeah. See, so I was like, <laughs> just so that when I walk, when I drive into the office, you know, I'm like, I'm in a band. I mean, yeah. You know, but the people who own the money suits could look at me and say, this guy's not a money guy. The way he's wearing, he's not comfortable yeah. with that suit, you know. So those are some of the things that like, I started training. Like, trains. That's what I'm saying. I wasted a lot of money because I wanted to look rich, mm. you know. And what people liked about me was my passion. Mm. It wasn't about, you know, so the people, once we started doing business, they're like, by the way, you know, I'm only doing business with my cover and passion. Mm. So nothing to do with that suit we still had a time. Oh, no. And I'm like, ah, you know, and so now I'm more comfortable. I go to meetings and 
God is like on myself because it's about my ideas. Here we are doing the Black Excellence series and um, you are considered to be Black Excellence but according to you, what is Black Excellence? According to me, Black Excellence is Black people that make a major difference mm. towards the future of our country. Um, right now we've got an employment crisis when a lot of the young people um, that are unemployed and we keep looking to the government. Black Excellence is us as Black people taking a stand and saying, you know what, we are going to help government. Right. We're going to create jobs, we're going to create great services, we're going to create great products that will make a difference for the future of our country. So for me, that's Black Excellence. It's not me standing and saying, hey, I'm successful, I own this, I own that, but it's like, what difference am I making to the lives of the people that are around me and to the normal stranger in the street? What hope am I giving them? What have, what opportunities am I creating that are going to unlock opportunities for those people that I don't even know? Mm. That's Black Excellence. So you mentioned that Black Excellence is being able to help other people. And you did say earlier on that, you know, when you shine, you want those around you to shine. Mm -hmm. So as an individual, as a company, how do you make sure that you give back to the people or to the country? My biggest passion is youth empowerment and women empowerment. Mm. I feel like, you know, women, especially beautiful women, I'm very passionate about beautiful women. Right. <laughs> Not in a silly way, but because I feel like, you know, beautiful women, sexy women, they're taken advantage of because of how they look. Mm. But there's also a lot of beautiful, sexy women that are great. Right. But in most cases, they're not taken seriously because of how they look. They only get opportunities because of how they look. You know, I worked for an agency before, and they were using the same talent over and over. And I just got up to here where I was like, you know what? I need to do something different. So my passion is to take those beautiful women with brains and empower them in such a way that they can stand on their own. Mm -hmm. I don't want to hold anybody. You know, that's why the company name is made to fly. We want to make you so you can fly. Right. You know, so it's to create a new generation of young beautiful women who don't need men mm. to survive, you know, who are doing things for themselves. I mean, look at you, like, you know what I mean? This is my passion, this is what I want to do, which is why I work with women only in terms of talent. Mm. Um, it's because of that that I've got daughters, you know, and my daughters are growing up, who are they going to look up to? Yeah. You know, um, like I'm saying in the industry, there's a lot of fakeness and that, so I want to just create a bunch of women that are going to go out there and help other women, other women, and before you know it, you've got like millions of women who own businesses, genuinely, no men behind it, and then we can have like a, a woman-led, you know, country, you mm. know, and generation that is just inspirational, and then we'll kill all these lesser, you know, tendencies and sleeping away to the top. What advice do you have for people who want to follow in your footsteps, people who come from where you come from, who are looking for a way forward? Take charge of your own life. Um, genuinely believe in yourself, because if you don't believe in yourself, no one else will. Take yourself seriously, you know. If you need to be somewhere 12, be there 12. You know, time is something you can't like get back. So take yourself seriously, you're doing it for yourself. You know, be diligent, work hard, set a clear goal, and go for the goal until you get it. It won't be easy, but just be clear about what you want and then go for it. You know, it's possible for anyone. You know, I know it's cliche, but anyone can do it. But genuinely, you have to believe it. You know, once you believe in, in, in something fully, the universe conspires to give you what you want. And if you really like, you know, I want to date with Jay, it's going to be an opportunity, you know, for you to go and do some work. And then once you're there, you're gonna like go to that restaurant and boom, there's J Lo. And you're like, oh my gosh. And then she's like, you look familiar. Where are you from? And I'm like, I'm from South Africa. She's like, oh my gosh, I'm really doing South African dad. I'm like, oh my god. Before you know it, like, I should let me not explain myself. Was that okay? <laughs> <laughs> this is so planned out. You're like, okay, I'm gonna go to a restaurant and then I'm gonna find J Lo. Yeah. But, but like, for real, once you discover the power of prayer mm. and the power of trusting God, you live your life like you're cheating. You're cheating. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but it's just that God is like a father. As a father, you want the best for your child. Mm -hmm. So if you pray and you care about it, you'll just be amazed that like you, you need five grand. All of a sudden, there's an opportunity to make five grand. Right. So just be clear about what you want and go for it. Okay. So this is something that uh, I like doing in my interviews to end it all. I have here a bowl of tongue twisters. Oh, okay. So you're going to pick one at random. And then you have 30 seconds to read it and recite it as fast as you can. Okay. Okay, in three, two, one, go. 
Okay. Can I go? Yeah. Fuzzy Wazzy was a bear. Fuzzy Wazzy had no hair. Fuzzy Wazzy was a fuzzy. Wazzy. Fuzzy Wazzy was a bear. Fuzzy Wazzy had no hair. Fuzzy Wazzy was a bear. Fuzzy Wazzy was a bear. Fuzzy Wazzy had no hair. Fuzzy Wazzy was a fuzzy. Wazzy. Fuzzy has hair. No. Wazzy 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 Wazzy. Yes. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Chama Maduleka. I'm a multi-talented creative, photographer, creative director, speaker, brand ambassador, etc., etc. You guys are watching the Black Excellence series with Benita Dunia. Fuzzy Wazzy was a babe. Fuzzy Wazzy had no babe. Fuzzy Wazzy didn't care. <laughs>